In fact, one of the doctors who contacted me recently, I made her CV and she got shortlisting within a week. In the last two years, I've helped over 200 doctors, mainly residents, registrars, and even some consultants with one-on-one -on -one interview. And when I went over their CVs, there I found a perfect balance of design and content. A perfect CV has two essential components, its design and its content. A person who's shortlisting will spend an average about 20 to 30 seconds to make a decision whether to shortlist or not. 30 seconds. You may have an excellent experience, awards, honors, distinctions, or even publications, but if your CV is not presented well, you will not be invited for an interview. Hello, my name is Dr. Rizwan Qureshi, and I'm one of the consultants working in emergency medicine here in Sydney, Australia. And I love making videos to help IMGs for the better professional and career choices. But before I start today's video, I would like to mention an important message. As of today, 71.4% of people watching the videos are not subscribed to my channel. This channel of Emergency Focus. It takes a lot of effort to create, edit, post this video consistently. And if you've ever received any value or information from my videos, can I please request you to subscribe to my channel, which will help me immensely and will cost you nothing. And for that, I say thank you. So what makes me such an expert on the matter? Firstly, my own CV. It has gone through transition from beginning as an intern, resident, registrar, and now as a consultant. And throughout this journey, my current CV is somewhat of a metamorphosis and it's a result of over 20 years of modification based on multiple feedbacks, failures and successes. More importantly, in the last two years, I've helped over 200 doctors, mainly residents, registrars and even some consultants with one-on-one -on -one interview. And when I went over their CVs, there I found a perfect balance of design and content in a very simplistic way which shows years of hard work which has gone into designing their CV. Also, I've been helping doctors with their CV applications cover letters for nearly five years now, and I've had three professional services for busy doctors. Now visit my website, www.emergencyfocus.net forward slash career guidance for more information. As usual, to keep the content relevant, I'm going to divide this video into things to do before you start designing your CV. I will do CV designing and we'll go through each and every section of that CV. Five major mistakes to avoid when creating your CV. Research for the job that you're going to be using the CV. What kind of words they are using in the job adverts? What is the job description? And what are the essential, desirable, and those required things for that job? These words must be shown in your first page to generate and maintain interest for the shortlister to go and proceed onto the second and third page. Now create a Google or MS Word template for your CV somewhere in the cloud. Now the reason for having a cloud-based document so you can keep on modifying the same CV document without losing your CV. Number three, the CV must not be more than three pages with no exceptions. The last page mainly for the references. The first page of the CV is what I call the shortlisting page and it must create interest and also create a desire for the person who's shortlisting to go over the second and a third page. Number five, simplicity is the key. Simple fonts, simple words achieve a stronger message. Remain factual in all sections of the CV. There's no place for describing yourself as someone you're not or maybe just boasting your qualities. It just doesn't work that way. So without further ado, Let's design a CV now. Now, here we're going to do a live demonstration of how to organize your CV. So I'm going to go through the template first and then I'll give you a specific example. So let's just start. So let's start deciding what the content should be like. And, and I think you can have as much as laid out in your CV, but the basic content should be based on these 10 factors, your personal details, your professional statement that has also made way in most of the CV and I'll talk about what it is all about. Your qualifications registration, basically the, the essentials which you must have. Your clinical experience and how it's put on the CV, it's very important. Procedural skills because they need to be matched to the job description. Your CPD activities, your awards if you've got any, along with any publications, presentations and audits. Not just like a casual ones but the more important ones. And finally, the references, which need to be at least two or maximum three, that should be ideal. And finally, a declaration stating that whatever you stated in the CV, it's true to your knowledge. 
Now let's talk about personal details. And as you can see, I've kept it very simple. Name, Melvin Pereira. Your qualification, MBBS, PhD. Simple address, simple email address. Now it's important that you have medical sounding email address. Lots of people put in like a very tacky kind of words into the email with alphabets and numbers and figures. Just try and minimize that and a simple reachable mobile phone number. And if you're overseas, please including the area code. Now, what's a personal state now? Personal statement is a statement which is there to highlight your professional skills, your qualifications, and how they match up to the job description. In three or four lines, it should be catchy enough to get the person who's shortlisting to gain that initial insight in just three lines. Now, technically speaking, it could be the most difficult part of your CV, but then again, if you put an effort in there, it could be the most rewarding part for you because that personal statement is going to enable that recruiter to shortlist you for an interview. And lately I've seen all of the people who've been shortlisted for an interview, they've done beautiful, concise personal statement. Let's move on. Qualifications. So in terms of qualifications, I've laid it out very simply, you know, your MBBS, if you've got any postgraduate qualifications like this doctor has done MRCP and FCPS, if you've done licensing exams like PLAB and MCQ or AMC and clinical component of PLAB and MCQ, just put it out there along with the dates and where you've done them. Registrations are very important. People often eliminate their own home registration so please make sure that you include like pakistan medical council indian medical council apra registration just put that you are eligible for provisional registration now if you got any awards a special one or even not so special one but they are an acknowledgement of your hard work like best surgical intern award best resident medical award it's good to include that on the first page because that shows that you are a kind of doctor who is dedicated to their work We'll move on. There we go. Clinical experience we've talked about. Then the clinical procedure skills. So keep it simple. Basic airway management. You might be a junior doctor. You have seen a simulated environment in which the airway is managed or you've assisted in an intubation you put in there. You've done basic life support course, advanced cardiac life support course, advanced pediatric life support, or ATLS or EMST. Just put in there. You don't have to define and detail it where you've done it from. If you've done any basic wound management course, basic communication skills course, you put it in there. And also if you are good with the skills of NG tube, IDC and LP, you put in there because these skills are the very skills which you'd be doing repeatedly in a role of a junior doctor. Courses and CPDs, just put it, the course that you've done, how many CPD points it had and where did it? I mean, you can just mention the name of the hospital like I did in Royal Prince Alfred Hospital or Liverpool Hospital or Wollongong Hospital and then be done and over with it. Now, next up, we've got non-clinical experience. So you might have done a teaching program for medical student, but remember, it's not just teaching medical students. It's about proper organized program in which you went through the modules of say, clinical examination of uh, neurological system, or, and you've consistently done that with the batches of medical students rotating through your ward through the duration of your term, which was three months. Or you may have taken them through to some communication skill scenario. You may have done or assisted them with some case-based discussions. But the matter is in the detail that you've consistently done with at least three or four medical students every Wednesday rotating through your medical ward uh, throughout those three terms, six months or you know one year, which consolidates that teaching experience into something of more of a reliability that you're a good teacher. Now, next up, if you've done any rosters duty, you may have organized some morbidity and mortality meeting, you may have presented a gold round, so just put it in there. Now, if you've got some extracurricular activities that you're good at sports, so you may have presented at sports, uh, um, like for example, you may have done, uh, you may have been, you know, a captain of your cricket team or golf team or football or soccer team, just put it in there. It shows your leadership skills, your affinity to do something out of the box and these are very valuable skills like if they're comparing 10 cvs with different doctors with different skills i think these skills will put you up front uh, because they stand you out moving on we can also talk about lastly the references now references are very important so make sure that you 
put in the name and qualification of reference what were they working as when they were supervising you consultant general surgeon place that you were working and what dates were you supervised and then the email and phone number so that the references can be contacted now what i'd like to do is just go through an example of an rdl cv which i have created um, now i call it a perfect cv but it might not be perfect for you uh, and it's my own style of doing cv so we'll just go through simple experts so you've seen the template how it translates so here we have a cv of dr melvin pereira who's done mbbs and bsc he lives in sydney australia and that's his email address and mobile phone number now the personal statement i've put in i'm not labeled anything like personal data or personal statement i've just said that he's a clinically competent doctor or i'm a clinically competent doctor over two and a half years of resident medical officer experience in icu emergency department acute medicine in busy tertiary level hospitals my clinical experience as a junior doctor has enabled me to develop understanding of clinical prioritization teamwork and communication with seniors and allied health staff competency in basic and critical care procedure and seeking opportunities and supervise clinical environment or rotation now this is nothing boasting about myself or there's nothing boasting about the particular roles that i've done it's just saying that i've done these roles in an efficient manner and i'm looking for more you know similar roles in an improving um environment um and it's simple it's effective does the job what about the qualifications i've listed qualifications very simply mbbs He's done a BSc in Bachelor of Science in Physiology, AMC, MCQ in Clinical. If he's done an English level test, I've put it in there. Registration, eligible for provisional registration. He's got registration in Pakistan Medical uh, Commission or Pakistan Medical Dental Council, and he's got a working with children certificate. And then he's got a best intern award, and he's got distinction in clinical medicine and pediatrics, and he's got a certificate of appreciation from the Medical Student Teaching Committee because he was a good teacher. again very simple and clean this is all the first page right i've written current appointment i have not described the previous appointment they also need to be laid out in exactly the same format and also reflect on that template i hope it makes sense and remember this is not something which is only very simple but it's also very effective so that's what i want you to go through and understand how to create effective simple concise cv to be shortlisted you've got a specific target in terms of the procedure i like to divide them as competent and observed that's how you know most of the professional procedures are also been devised on apra format so competent procedure this doctor has done advanced and basic life support procedures for adult and pediatric emergencies because he's got a lot of remember ed and icu experience one thing that i'd like to emphasize here whatever experience that you're putting it should make sense you cannot say that you're competent in advanced and basic life safe produce uh, procedures like intubation and central lines if you've not done any emergency or critical care terms it must make sense okay he's competent in basic also competent in basic airway management bag valve mass using airway adjuncts and supraglottic devices he can cannulate put sutures wound management catheters ng tubes and lumbar puncture basic essential bread and butter procedures for all the junior medical officer every consultant stream he's observed neonatal resuscitation burns management intubation central lines and arterial line placement and removal for morning from ent and pleural and peritoneal drains i think that's acceptable for any junior medical officer at that level now in terms of his continuing professional development he has done a few things he's done 2 months of emergency focused clinical orientation course he's done 2 months of amc clinical tutoring he's also done some online workshops and emergency focused workshops he's got some extracurricular activities he's in a parent teacher student committee um, and uh, he also coaches on uh, you know football sports uh, at smithfield primary school now you may think that might not be relevant but i think it's important to show that command of leadership and managing a team even though it might be a team of small children but it shows that persistent that regularity that commitment and that's important he has also been a volunteer at patients association and he writes a blog medico's life um and that shows on his or reflects on his communication skills in terms of written communication skills which might be very relevant and valid point for professional medical documentation He's got a f- his references laid out very nice and clean. Um, consultant medicine supervising consultant at this hospital. This is the contact details, and so on and so forth. And lastly, that you need to fulfil. The other thing is 
modify your CV bit by bit based on the job description. You might be applying for a job of medical RMO. You might be applying for a job for a surgical RMO or an orthopedics or an emergency. Make sure your skill sets pertaining to those specialties stands out. That's very important. Now for most junior medical officers jobs, your skill set you'd be pretty universal and pretty basic and you should not need to modify your CV from end to end. It should be very simple. But obviously if it's coming to a point that uh, you know you're applying for a pediatric job and all the CV is laid out from a psychiatry point of view it's not just going to work so you need to make sure that you make the transition and read the job description to marry that transition i hope it makes sense five major mistakes to avoid when creating your medical CV number one there's no need to include identifiable details like a photograph detail address any of that Avoid complicated fonts and words. Similarly, avoid using tables and graphs based templates. Avoid over enthusiastic remarks about yourself like great team player, highly motivated, effective communicator and result oriented doctor. Trust me, these words don't mean anything and these skills are better tested during the interview. Do not settle for one size fit all approach. Always keep modifying your CV till you start getting shortlisted. And then once per year, as your experience and skills and qualifications improve, CV needs to be modified as well. And lastly, but perhaps the most important, never lie on your CV about anything. Now, no job that you've done or no qualification or experience that you have must not make its way into the CV. And remember, there is an interview and a referencing process and you will be easily caught out if you're caught lying in that process. I really hope you benefited from this video. And remember, if you're busy and want this work to be done professionally, please visit my website, www.emergencyfocus.net, and I have three services to help you. Firstly, I can personally edit, redesign, and reword your CV, give you desired application form responses, and even form your cover letter. This service has been utilized by junior medical officers, specialists, and they have left amazing references for me. In fact, one of the doctors who contacted me recently, I made her CV and she got shortlisting within a week. Secondly, I've also recorded a video course on a complete career guidance, which includes template for your CV, application form responses, and even interview questions and detailed responses for that. This course has been purchased by over a thousand doctors to date, so please do have a look. Thirdly, I've got a live support service of which is called Complete Career Guidance Service where my team and I collectively will help you every step of your way. Building a CV, application selection criteria questions and also interview with weekly live session. Look after yourself and each other and we'll catch you up shortly. Thank you.